So this is what we created in part one. There's me, hello. That's a video. We created a grid that's overlaid on the video. And then we also <clears throat> did some frame referencing, which finds the pixels that are changing. Um, for the pixels that are changing, we can use, oops. We can use a different kind of sensitivity for the cache offsets, but around about minus four or minus five when the app is running at 60 FPS. So uh, it's, it's good. So minus five is like one frame at 12 FPS is the equivalent because at 60 FPS, 60 divided by five is 12. And, you know, we can blur a bit to, to try and get rid of some of the noise. And there's also the threshold. So if the threshold is zero, then it's super sensitive and everything's going to be triggering. In fact, if I put my pixelate on, you can see, you know, I'm not moving, but just the noise in the sensor is triggering everything. So we definitely want a bit of threshold. How much threshold you want depends on how much sensitivity you want. And we can change the cell size, etc. So today, in this video now, I want to show how to convert this information into music. And in the next video, probably I won't be able to squeeze it all in, do all the 3D effects. And our patch is really nice and simple. I'm not going to go into that. I want to talk about the music. So for the music, I will talk a little bit about MIDI. The music is going to come from another app. I'm going to use Ableton Live. I believe there's a free, is there a free version? I don't know. There is probably a demo version, but you can use any music software will support this as long as it supports MIDI. So what is MIDI? Let me do this actually. Where's my parameters? Oh yeah. Let me put that video on, get rid of the grid so that you can see me. We don't need that. Okay. So this is Ableton Live. Where do you go? I just opened it up. There's nothing going on. Um, instruments. Let's choose an instrument. I'm just going to choose search for piano. And okay, that's a piano. Let's put that there. I'm going to drag and drop that there. So this is this column. I mean, this isn't an Ableton tutorial, but it's the same for all software. This is this track has piano. Here I have a MIDI, uh, a MIDI controller. Hopefully this should work, I haven't tested it yet. Okay, cool, it works. Okay, so I'm pressing here, it's sending MIDI signal there. Now, what is a MIDI signal? There's a program called MIDI View, which is by the wonderful people at Hote Technique, it's free and open, is it open source? I don't know if it's open source, but it's free. Um, I'm sure there's a Mac version as well. It's a, it's a lifesaver, use this. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna play this. As you see, I press the, that key and you can see on my screen, it says note on C3 velocity 127. And here it says channel two value 127 and a bunch of hex stuff, doesn't matter. When I let go, it's gonna say note off. These are MIDI events. So as I, this doesn't actually make any sounds. This is only sending this signal to Ableton Live and Ableton Live is triggering that thing. Um, now, if I press it soft, uh, look at the list here, all of these, it said the value is 127 and zero. 127 is on because it's a seven bit. This is a very old protocol from the eighties. Um, so it's seven bits, which means between zero and 127. So there's 128 values. And if I press it gently, you see the value is 36 and that's called the velocity. It's the speed at which I'm hitting it. Hard, 127, soft is 36. And you can hear that it's not just the volume that's changing. I mean, it is the volume. If I hit it hard, it's loud. If I hit it soft, it's soft. But also, if it's a good synthesizer, um, then it should also change like the timber 
the, the, the quality of the sound, that it's not just a, a volume. So for example, if I choose a different instrument, uh, let's say some kind of synth. Okay, let's put that there. So now, okay, that one didn't really change much. Let's try that one. Usually with a good synth, the whole timber of the sound changes. So this is soft and hard. Okay, it doesn't matter. The point I wanted to make is that this is a protocol and we're sending MIDI from here to my computer. And there's a bunch of other stuff which I won't go into today, but like there's MIDI controllers. So as I play with that, you can see it says controller 110. So this is controller number 110. And then there's a value 0 to 127. This one here is controller 1111. This one here is 116. These are arbitrary numbers. They don't mean anything. You just map them to things. A key thing I want to mention is I'm sent MIDI has something called channels and there's 16 MIDI channels. You can see as I'm pressing this, these are all on MIDI channel two. That's because this device is programmed to send on MIDI channel two. I can tell it to send on a different channel and this depends on the, on the controller, but on this, I'm going to do like that and that. Now it's going to send on one. So now you can see it's sending on channel one. And so let's do, so now it's going to be channel three. Now it's the same sound, no matter what I choose, because in Ableton, this column, let, let's get rid of these other things because they're not doing anything these tracks, I've only got one track, it's listening to all MIDI channels. So that's the first thing. So let's say make that channel one. Now, when I play this, we get no sound because, let's put that there, I'm sending on MIDI channel three. If I tell this to send on one, then we can hear it. And what this allows me to do is I can set up piano. Let's put that as a new track and make that one on channel two. So this is synth Koto listening on channel one. This one is a piano listening on channel two. So now let's make sure this is in channel one. I'm sending on channel one. Now I switch to channel two. Okay, we still hear nothing. This is a quirk of Ableton because the track isn't armed. See, that one's red, that one's not red, which means this track is disabled for listening. It's only for playing. So I have to press that to arm that track. But if I press that, then that one goes off. Um, so this track is armed, but that track isn't armed. So now this is gonna work. But if I switch back to channel one, that's not gonna work. So I need to arm both by pressing control and arming both tracks. So now both tracks are armed. I can play channel one and I can switch to channel two and they're both active. And of course I can send both channels at the same time. I can send different notes to different channels to get different instruments playing, which is what we're going to do. Uh, but first, we encounter another problem. Right now, this is sending MIDI to Ableton. How do I send MIDI? What I want to do is I want to send MIDI from Touch Designer into Ableton. And it turns out you can't actually do this in Windows, still in the year 2025, you need software to do this. The software you need is, bless Tobias Ericsson, I've been using this for decades, it's open source, 
loop MIDI. This is for Windows, by the way. On Mac, you can do this. On Mac, there is a way of doing it. Just Google um, audio MIDI setup Mac MIDI routing. <clears throat> so if you Google, I don't have a Mac right now, but so I can't show you. It's easy to find. You just need to do this thing on audio MIDI setup on Mac. You basically, the concept is the same as what Loop MIDI does, which is you need to create a virtual MIDI device. So, because what Touch Designer can do is it can send MIDI to a port. So I can send MIDI from Touch Designer to this, but I can't send it within the computer. So you need to um, download Loop MIDI. I already have it. And when you get it, install it, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be blank. So you just need to create, just click plus and create a blank. Uh, this is a virtual port. And you can create loads of them, which is really cool because for very, very complex projects, uh, which you know I, I've done many times, you can create multiple because each MIDI port only supports 16 channels. But sometimes, you know, you want 80 channels or 100 channels then you can create multiple MIDI ports. Also, just as a side note, you might be thinking, why aren't we using OSC? OSC is a much newer protocol, open sound control. I'll cover it in future videos. Uh, and the reason is because MIDI is so simple. It works out of the box. It, MIDI will work with any music software. It'll work with Ableton, Fruity Loops, Reaper, Logic, um, cakewalk. It, it just works. That's what it was designed for. It's, it's a 50-year-old protocol. Uh, whereas with OSC, you'd need to do a little bit of fiddling to get it to work with some other software. So it's just going to work. We just need one port. Um, so I've created that virtual port. I'm going to need to restart Ableton because I think Ableton only checks MIDI devices on startup. Now let's launch Ableton again. And if you go to options, settings, this one here, link tempo MIDI, and then, oh, there it is, loop MIDI. So these, so I, I have a lot of MIDI devices connected. So that's why it's, 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 you know, I've got a lot in this list. You won't have all of this stuff. But there is loop MIDI port, and it's, it's enabled. So I should be able to now send MIDI. If from Touch Designer I send MIDI to loop MIDI, it should go to Touch Designer, I mean Ableton. So just as a test, let's again delete everything here that we don't need. Let's create a piano. And let's just test it. Okay, so this, as you can see here, this is Ableton. And channels, let's leave it at all channels for now. Let's go back to here. The first thing we need to do is go to Dialogues, MIDI Device Mapper. We need to set up a MIDI device here. So we need to create what's known as a mapping. So create a new mapping. So device one. Um, we don't care about input. We're not going to be reading input. I could listen to, for example, um, MIDI, MINI Lab MIDI. Let's do that. So my input device, which is what this device is. And if I created a chop MIDI in, then when I hit the keys, you can see that it's appearing here. And the format that it's appearing in, CH, channel two, so it's the second channel because I'm sending on channel two, that's how it's configured. And then N means note, and then the number, 60, this is 61. Um, and that's just a convention, you can look it up. Um, let's look up the MIDI notes mappings. So here you go, uh, the octave and then the key. So C, middle C, I think is 60, if I recall correctly. Yeah, mi this is middle C. Middle C is 60, 12 notes in an octave, so it's, you know, 48 is an octave below, 36 is an octave below, that, etc. These are just the numbers um, 
of, of each note. That's the mapping. So if I press middle C on this, is it that one? Okay, so it's off by one, probably because there's a setting in, in there somewhere. But that, that, that doesn't matter. So if I change it to send on MIDI channel one, now you can see, let's do this. So that's channel one. And then these are the controllers. So these get a whole different um, message. But yeah, we can ignore that. The key thing to look at, confusingly, let's just clear this, um, reset channels. These are the velocity, the value is zero to one. So if I press it gently, Hardest one. There's a setting for that actually here on the notes. But anyway, this is the MIDI in. But actually, we don't want to do MIDI in. We want to do MIDI out. You want to send MIDI. So go back to the device mapper. We actually don't need anything there. Out device. Oh, and also the other thing I wanted to mention is you can create multiple. So let's the key lab. So the key lab is that big white one over there. So MIDI in. You choose a device. Device number one is this one. Device number two, it's now it's listening to that one, which I don't think maybe is not even connected right now. Yeah, it's not connected, which is why it, it gave the error. So, MIDI device mapper, let's get rid of that and that, create a new one. We want to do MIDI out. These are my MIDI out devices, so I can send MIDI to each, any, I can pick which device I want to send MIDI to, but I want to send it to the loop port, the loop MIDI port, which is my virtual port, which is internal. So now we're going to use the MIDI out. And how does this work? Just right click. Oh, there is no operator snippets. Okay, well, the way it works is we just need to send it a, a channel with the right format, which I believe was like CH1 and 60. If I connect that, and then zero for notes off. Let's um, do this. So if I make that one, and then I send zero as a note off. If I make that 48, it's gonna be an octave lower. I make that one. Easy. So, CH1 and uh, let's say if that's 60, and 60, one, two, three, four, so 64, and then Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, it's actually be CH one N. Uh, seventy two, sixty plus twelve, seventy two. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's MIDI. We just need to create a big channel list that we send to the MIDI out and it's going to make the music for us, convert this information into music.